with Coach Brown at Lake. How do you guys go? Do you oh, it's a love-hate relationship. <laughs> uh, no, it's great. Uh, we we really have a great time whenever we get we're together. We don't get to hang out a ton. You you know our seasons the way they overlap, but. I moved into his neighborhood, so uh, I pat. They, they voted me in, and um, but we'll spend a little time. This is this is the time of year where we really spend a lot of time together, you know, traveling together. Uh, we've got a couple of golf outings together, and, and so uh, it's always fun. And then we go to ACC meetings. We spend three days together at that. So uh, this time of year, till about June, we, we we get a lot of a lot of quality time, and it's always fun to hang out with Coach B and. Um, it's been cool this year too. We're just starting these these events, and so uh, to be able to travel with the coach of the year, uh, man, that's pretty sweet. Uh, so you know, I'm just happy for him and the season they had, and, and uh, I don't have any doubt that there'll be more to come. I think, I think last year was the first one you missed. Obviously, it was Daniel makeup baseball game yeah. rain out, whatever it was. Yeah. How important is that? Just to say, you know, family is first for me, and, and that was a very important moment in my son's life. I think yeah. people from Charleston would appreciate. Yeah, that. well, I get to come to another Charleston uh, prowling growl. I don't get to see my son play baseball again. You know, that was it, and uh, so uh, that's just kind of how I look at it. And sometimes, you know, we try to schedule all these things, but it was just a conflict. Couldn't do anything about it, and I hated to miss, but. You know, I was right where I needed to be, and we did. I think we did a video, and I think I sent Renfro down here, so I'm I'm sure he filled in just fine, and uh, everybody enjoyed getting to to see Hunter. So keeping this program at the mountaintop, how do you how do you continue to do that? I know you've got the players, I know you've got the coaches, and the solidarity, but how do you stay in the in the top four, top whatever you have to be at this program? You start over every year. You you understand that you don't get to stay on the mountaintop. You know, that's not there's no. There's no right to that. You got to pay the price every year, and you got to start over, and you got to climb all over again, uh, one step at a time. And you know, uh, you just stay focused on the things that that uh, that got you here. In fact, I, it was interesting. I just was having a staff meeting the other day, and uh, I, I read my opening my my first opening spring practice notes uh, to the team from 2009. Uh, so it was like February of 2009, and I had just kind of two pages of notes that I wanted to cover with the team as we were getting ready to go out and get started for spring ball and, and all that. And uh, to be honest with you, those things that I talked about that day are the exact same things we talk about today. And uh, so not much has changed as far as how we go about our business, uh, other than the fact that we've obviously had a lot of success to build on and uh, we have momentum. You know, we created momentum, and so to me, to sustain that momentum, uh, you stay committed to the little things, to the core values, uh, things you believe in, and you start over every year. I mean, you just you don't get you don't get to start on second base uh, or third base. You know, you got to touch first, you got to touch second, you got to touch third in order to get home, and uh, that's just what we do, and that's for us how we've maintained the consistency in our program. How much stock do you take in a spring game? I mean, how much stock in what you saw on the Saturday or whatever it was? I take stock in, it's just a practice, but I take stock in every practice that we have. We have 15, and they all matter. They all count. Well, maybe that 14th one. Uh, it's not that 14th one, we really just use it to to teach and, and to prepare them for the game and to teach them for the summer. Uh, but the, all those others, I mean, they all matter. They all count. Uh, so, I mean, it's, it, it was an awesome opportunity for us because, you know, anytime you split the team like that, you get, you get different lineups, combinations of lineups. And it's fun to see guys, guys that aren't necessarily starters become starters. And it's fun to, to see how they respond. So you learn a lot. It's another opportunity to grade and evaluate and, and, uh, and teach. Uh, so it's a, definitely a big part of it. Just said after the game that the offense is as deep as it's ever been in his time at Clemson. That's great on paper, but and the competition could be great. But how do you keep everybody happy, and how do you use all that talent as you move forward with all those, especially at quarterback? I mean, we're not trying to keep everybody happy. Uh, we're trying to just uh, to win, and you know, I mean, that's just everybody has a role. Coaches coach, players play, and and. Uh, you know, it's 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 just it's always going to be a very co competitive environment, and um, I think everybody understands that. Uh, but yeah, there's nobody out there trying to 
go into, okay, well, let's keep this person happy and this, that's just not how we go about it. Uh, and so that's not our culture. Uh, I think everybody understands that performance is what matters and that's why we evaluate and grade and film every single detail of every practice. And, uh, but guys know that, you know, if you deserve to play, you're gonna have opportunity to play, uh, but you gotta play well, you know, it becomes about performance. And um, so it's great, it's, we got good competition. I do think we have very good depth uh, in the offensive line. We got, we got great depth at quarterback. Uh, we've got good depth at receiver and I think gonna get better when uh, Justin Ross gets here this summer. And um, we got, you know, we, when Lynn Jay gets here, I think we'll have good quality depth at running back. Uh, like what we got at tight end. So, I mean, it's a, it's a very good group, and, but uh, we got to put it all together. And, and get them all in the right spot and, and you know, let them, let them battle it out on the field and then we'll go from there. Coach Mutchamp took a little slap at Clemson earlier this week talking about LSU being the real depth out. No, no, uh, we'll, we'll keep working on it. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't, uh, uh, so we've lost maybe two games in about five years, so we'll pick it up and we'll keep working hard, see if we can get a little better. Uh, no, man, I'm, I'm just uh, – I like, I like the Death Valley that I'm at. I love right where I am, and I think it's a great place, an unbelievable environment, and uh, thankful that I get a chance to uh, go to work there every day. How are these events different after three years of winning the ACC, being in the college football playoff? What's your reception difference here? Um, I, you know, I, I – I don't know. I, I, it's hard for me. To, I've just always enjoyed them. I, I, I think the Clemson people, to be honest with you, I mean, have always been great. You know, I mean, I mean, even all the way back to 2010, we had that one bad year, and but but there was still optimism uh, when I came on the road that year, and and uh, I think there was still belief, and you know, for the majority, for, as far as my reception, I think people have always been uh, great, and. Uh, Certainly last year, coming off a national championship, there was just a, a, a euphoria everywhere I went. You know, people could not wait to tell me their, their natty story, uh, which, was, which was so much fun. But, uh, you know, this year I think that uh, they're eager. You know, I think everybody's excited about our team and, and uh, looking forward to the season. And, you know, it's fun that there's so much talk about our, our team right now because we have – a lot of different options at many positions. And uh, so it's been great. I mean, the Clemson people have always been very, uh, you know, supportive everywhere I've been. Have you gotten any good coaching advice from fans? Oh, all the time, yeah. Uh, I, get, you use. <laughs> I, get, I get a lot of good coaching advice all the time. I had a guy come up to me in, uh, where was that, Columbia uh, the other night, Lexington, I think. And he, he wanted me to. He wanted me to put play four quarterbacks. He wanted me to put all all four quarterbacks in the game, and uh, so you know we'll put a little thought into that. Is there any? I mean, not just a quarterback. If you're really deep, like play position. four quarterbacks at the same time. Uh, so two would be great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> is there, is, when you're so deep at certain positions, do you look at maybe this guy can't be the number one player at this position, but like Ray Ray last year playing a little bit of defense. Yeah. How oh, much yeah. creativity oh, do you yeah. have with these guys oh, yeah. just we, to get them on the field? We do that every year. You know, we sometimes we got guys that we work at different positions that a lot of times people don't know anything about, you know, but we just we try to take some time here and there and and, uh, and check them out. I mean, we've done that many, many times. I mean, Vic Beasley was a running back, uh, you know, finally got him in the right spot and the rest is history. You know, Tyler Shatley was a nose guard. Uh, Cervinka was a D lineman. I mean, we got we get get guys in the right spot. Uh, I mean, that's been that way. All way. Ty Hill was a running back when I first came to Clemson, and he, he was a first round corner. Uh, so I think that's just a part of it. Uh, T.J. Green played receiver as a freshman, moved over to safety, and, you know, went on to have a great career. Um, you know, so it's just that's just kind of part of it. What we do is get try to get everybody in the right spot, and, and then see where we go and sometimes you have you have a, a weakness somewhere and maybe there's a guy that can help you that's at another position and, and uh, you try to you try to do what's best for the team I mean I go back to Adam Humphreys played he had to play some DB force uh, in a couple of ball games back when when he was here so it's just part of it what's up Kimbo hey coach but yeah we do that
Cornell Powell look at safety? Uh, he was, you know, he was, there you go. So one of those guys that, uh, uh, not sure how you know that, but uh, <laughs> uh, I'm going to cut my tight and practice down a little bit. Uh, but he's, uh, thank you, Kimbo, you the man. Uh, he's, uh, he did fine. You know, we, we just, he was a guy that we were really, we were really thin at safety when Nolan got hurt. And uh, so uh, just took him, put him over there and see how he did and did some individual with him, did some skelly with him, and he did great. I mean, he's a natural athlete. So I, I think we could probably take any of those guys or the great majority of them and, uh, and move them and, you know, they would have a chance uh, because they're, they're great athletes. Yeah, we good? Ready? Set.